David right. Barnes, right. you, now, you, what's your take on inflation and what the president's doing? Well, of course, I'm against what he's doing, but for some somewhat different reasons. Um, it totally destroys growth. It's transfer payments that are wasteful, and there are inflation problems that it will not help. He, I mean, he's wrong about all that. Here's the thing I just want to point out. Brian and I have kind of corresponded about this. Uh, excessive government spending sucks away future growth. It has put Japan in a 30 or 40 year deflationary cycle. I have tremendous problems with what he's doing and wants to do. Mm. Our inflationary problems right now, when you see auto parts and auto sales at 30% inflation and other things five, six, 7%, there ha has to be different causes. And it's yeah. not just the, the uh, COVID relief bill number four or whatever that was. Mm. And it's not just Fed policy either. The, the Fed could raise rates to 4% tomorrow. It's not going to reopen the ports of Long Beach. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The problem we have is that we don't have enough goods and services to be there with the demand side that these Precisely. people underestimated because they shut down the economy so long and they're just shocked that people want to go back to living their lives. Right. If ever there was a time when we needed a high dividend paying stock to take us through this nasty anxiety period, what do you got for me? Well, what we need is a high growing dividend yeah, stock right. yeah. because everyone's worried about inflation. You got to grow with you inflation. You correct me every week on well, this. I do. I do. Uh, you know, after our fifth year together, yeah, we'll right. uh, get this. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Who has more ability to pass on inflation than Walmart? Uh, nobody. Nobody. There, as a matter of fact, the prices aren't going up at Walmart. There is no inflation. Their ability to pass that on is the textbook definition of pricing power. Hmm. Walmart had gangbuster numbers last night. You see today the market's down quite a bit. Walmart's up 2.5%. Cisco's up 25 or 3%. Both of these companies we've owned for years. Walmart has grown the dividend every year since 1973. Stuart, I was born in 1974. Okay. You know what that means? They've grown the dividend every year of my life. That He's doing the much, math on how much older uh, he is. He's lying exactly, about that, yeah, by the way, yeah. too. Man, I'm a generation older than you. <laughs> well, this is killing me. Okay. Uh, Walmart is a great dividend grower, and they have the ability to do this because they grow free cash flow. And Cisco now is in the same boat. They have a heavy recurring revenue mm. business. Cisco and Walmart are great dividend growers. Mm. Okay. What does the div what's the dividend that Walmart pays as of now at 137? It, it's somewhere Three? around the 2%, so it's still much higher than the S&P. But if you were to look at Walmart's dividend, as a percentage of where we bought it, let's say 15 years ago, it's 10% because they've grown the dividend so much. And, and, then, and then Cisco's is about 3%. And again, great growth for a whole decade now. You'd only sell those two stocks if and when it looks like the dividend is going to go down or disappear. Or or if you're trimming to find other opportunities, right? We're active yeah. managers, but we wouldn't be looking to sell either of those anytime soon. They're not going to be cutting those dividends. Valuable information. David, thanks very much for being here. Yes, good to sir. see you in New York, man. It's good to be here. All right.